Hey everyone, welcome back to Metal Mondays with Maiden. Today we're going to have a special edition and I'm going to show you some uh, something different. This is my Kiss Destroyer cassette collection. Kiss Destroyer was an album that was very near and dear to me because it was the first one I purchased as a kid. I was 10 years old and this album changed my life. And it was one of the most influential records in my life. And uh, yeah, so let's talk about it a little bit. Uh, so there's, I have seven tapes, so we'll get into that, but high level, this is a French pressing, this is a one, another French pressing, this is the first American pressing, this is the first Columbia House pressing, this is a Canadian, second uh, 1980s reissue, and a very expensive and rare remaster, and of course, greeting us here, let's show you, is the album itself, the vinyl, the original Kiss record. That started it all for me. So let's go ahead and get started. So Kiss Destroyer was the fourth studio album from Kiss. It was released March 15th, 1976 on Casablanca. It was recorded on um, September the 3rd, the 6th, 1975, in between the, the uh, Just to Kill and the Live Tour, and picked up after the Live Tour from January to February 1976. It was recorded at two places. Electric Lady Land and Record Plant in New York City. This was the third successful release for Kiss to reach the top 40, and it was certified gold and platinum in the same year, and that would have been in 1976. So they came off the Alive record and the Alive tour, probably the biggest band of the time. So they had figured they'd bring in a big time producer, so they brought in the former Alice Cooper producer, Bob Ezrin. And Bob proceeded to work a 15-song demo that they had recorded back in 1975. Most of that material was rejected by Bob Ezrin, and only two heavily reworked versions were put on the album. One was Detroit Rock City, and the second one was God of Thunder. And the rest of the demo material later would end up on Rock and Roll Over, which was the album following this one and Gene's solo record, which came out following that in 1978. So the basic tracking was done during that brief period in between the Dress to Kill and the Live Tour, so September the 3rd to the 6th, 75, and the rest of it was recorded, again, conclusion of the Live Tour from January to February 76, releasing March 15th. It was kind of funny because Bob Ezrin had to stop the sessions a few times, to teach the band musical theory, as none of them actually were professionally trained musicians. They'd all learned their instruments by ear and couldn't reproduce sound consistently time after time. So we had to go in and bring them, quote unquote, to camp and teach them how to read and write music so they could be more consistent in the studio. And uh, so, again, Bob Ezrin has his hands all over this. He brought in orchestra pieces. He brought in strings. Sound effects like a Detroit Rock City, the strings and great expectations, as well as some concerto, uh, London or New York Philharmonic, as well as a musician that was uncredited from an, from the Alice Cooper band, who had played on, I believe, Sweet Pain. And the cover art was designed by Ken Kelly, and he was given a a free concert ticket and invited to backstage for his payment for designing the cover art here. So here's a little bit of a that cover art, something else. And he was then uh, contracted to do Love Gun, which came out in 77. So there's a cover for Love Gun right there. And uh, Ken Kelly was also known as quite a fantasy artist in certain circles in the, com in the comic world and whatnot. And he actually, this is the second version of the cover art. The first version right here that would later come out on the 35th anniversary of destroyer called resurrected uh was deemed too violent and so they had to tone it down a little bit but again it was re-released under resurrected so that's the original cover art for everybody to see and also ironically the rest of the material from the demo in 75 was the second disc on the resurrected 35th anniversary which I don't have a cassette for. I have it on vinyl. I haven't opened it. So there's that. Maybe I'll show that someday. So uh, with that said, that's a quick deep dive of the record. 
Again, I'll tell you what the song tracks are. Most people know the song tracks. Whoop, easy. But the song tracks here would be the easiest one to look at. Probably this one. There we go. Again, the epic Detroit Rock City. We all know that one. King of the Nighttime World. God of Thunder, Great Expectations. Flaming Youth, Sweet Pain, Shout It Out Loud. Beth, Do You Love Me? And there's also a hidden track about a minute after Do You Love Me? And it was just a little jam that they had done. It's like a minute and a half. And it was uh, sort of a hidden track. And as a kid, you're like, whoa, what's that, man? Did you hear that? Did you play that? And, and of course, this is back during the, the uh, panic of the time of the 80s for me. So, of course, their parents are always, like, critical of all this kind of stuff. But, again, this one here, we'll start off with this one since it's in my hand. This is a Mercury reissue remaster from the late 90s. These are very limited print. Generally, about 10,000 of these were made, and that's it. Um, it uh, sounds great. Here's the copy of it. Clear shell, beautiful design. And again, I had the uh, track times with it. A lot of a lot of cassettes didn't have track times at the time, but here. So the inside of the gatefold would have had this Kiss Army advertisement on the record, and of course, this has the lyrics. But here's the full cover art. And the cassette. What a beautiful piece of artwork. I love it. It like I would spend hours as a kid just staring at that photo and. And pretending I was Kiss and imagining what it was like. And when I finally got to see Kiss live, dude, I swear there's a little tear to my eye. It meant a lot. So this is the first cassette I ever owned. This was a budget reissue of Destroyer. It was called the Priceless Collection, issued only in Canada. They reissued two Kiss tapes. One was Dynasty and the other one was Destroyer. These cassettes are pretty bare bones. They didn't have any of the track listing on the shell. It was just five screws, black shell, title on the front, and the, of course, you know, the legal stuff on the bottom. And, of course, a big window, a big timing window there. That'll come in significantly after I show you how you identify some of these as we get into this. So that's the first cassette I ever owned, Kiss Destroyer, on the price list, which I got, I believe, at the Superstore for $7.99. It was with my dad. It was my allowance. I saved up for a couple of weeks. And it was the first cassette I ever bought with my own money. So there's that. And then this here is a 1980s reissue of Kiss Destroyer. And this is a Columbia House printing on Polygram. You can tell because it says CRC, Columbia Record Company. And this here is the opaque shell. So this is mid-80s. You see it has the small window. Okay, so the small windows for the second printings had the timing marks here. And the first printings on Polygram did not. So that's how you know. That's why I said that that window becomes significant. Okay, so let's get into some of my special ones. So this is from France. This is on Vogue. This is extremely rare. This is a 70s printing. See here, it says Vogue. Let's zoom in a little bit on this. And it has Vogue etched on the shell. See that there, Vogue? That's pretty cool. And again, this was from the 70s. It's very, very clean. The printing's very, very uh, vibrant for its age. See here, it doesn't have the total track time. Some of them do. It does not have the track times. It has a small window there. there you go. And made in France. So this would have been printed in France, 1970, I believe it's 79. This was uh, printed in France as well. This is the original Casablanca version of this cassette that was printed in France. And this is the first printing. And this is a paper label on a green opaque shell. And you see here, like I said, the very small window and it has the timing marks on the top, on the bottom. So that's the Kiss Destroyer from France. And this is a 1970s 
Columbia House. You can tell that by it says CRC right here. And it has two red lines. So the 70s Columbia House cassettes, all of them had two red lines and a picture within the picture. So white on each top and bottom. And they also had the catalog number stamped on the spine. So you'll see here, this is a green cassette. Very small window again. And I believe this one here says CRC right here in the bottom. And this one does not have the track time where some of the other ones did. Uh, on the back, standard fare. So this is the first Columbia House uh, printing of this cassette. Now, last but not least, this is the Kiss cassette. This is the first American printing. You see stamp number again on the spine. This is the first printing in the U.S. And you'll know here because it has the Sunset Strip address for Casablanca. So with that said, thanks for watching. Have a great week. We'll see you all next week. That concludes this edition of KISS Takeover. Take care.